Has there ever been a video that you've just absolutely dreaded the response to? I mean, not all of your content creators, of course, so I don't really know if I can expect an answer to that question. But I open with it for one reason. I really wanted to make this video, but uh, there's this thing with Persona fans. They don't like it when queer people make conversations like this. They don't really like discussions of the games that aren't just hollow praise. As you may be surprised to hear, I have very little praise for Naoto Shirogane's relationship to gender in Persona 4. In fact, I have zero praise. Persona 4 is a goddamn mess. So, who is Naoto Shirogane? Well, we're introduced to him as a guy that gets called short a lot and has kind of an effeminate voice. Which is whatever. Guys getting called short isn't something that I'm particularly fond of, but it's not the worst thing in the world. Naoto is presented as a male character for most of the game before his dungeon where it's revealed that he was assigned female at birth. Of course, what does Persona 4 do in response to this? Does it have Naoto be an interesting look into transgender characters? B. Brush it off immediately? C. Literally just be transphobic for no reason? Well, if you guess C, then you win some bonus zenny. The group, instead of assuming that Naoto is transgender and having a dysphoria moment, assumes, oh, Naoto is just a weirdo who likes to pretend to be a boy. I understand this is rural Japan, but this is framed as a normal thing to do by the story. The characters are never taught why this is bad in any way. In fact, the game acts as if this is in a moment of emotional clarity for the cast. They just say, yup, this is a good thing to do to your transgender friends, and you should do it, and you're cool for doing it. Now, let me get one thing clear. Naoto is explicitly not transgender in the text. She's ultimately cisgender. But her personal journey is quite literally the transgender men are actually just girls who want boy jobs a talking point that TERFs espouse. Allow me to explain. A common argument against the existence of transgender men comes from TERFs, an acronym for Trans Exclusionary Radical Feminists. And this argument is that transgender men are just women who are told at a young age that they had to be boys in order to like traditionally male things. Now first of all, there isn't a massive epidemic of children being told they're transgender. In fact, this rarely ever happens. Transgender children have to advocate for themselves in pretty much every case. There is no evidence to suggest that kids are being turned transgender the world over by force. But second of all, transgender men can be some of the most effeminate people I know sometimes, because gender doesn't matter. I've talked about that a few times. Naoto proposes that the only reason she wanted to be a man was because she liked being a detective, and that her ideal image of a detective was a man. So she decided to pose as a man. This experimentation with gender expression is, at best, ignored by the rest of the cast, who quickly adjust to calling her female out of nowhere, specifically by Yosuke, who really despises any kind of other in his life. Originally in development, this was due to internalized homophobia, but that idea was cut due to Atlas Corporate's intervention. It's a bit surprising that the director of these games wanted to do something actually interesting with a gay character considering how terrible he is to LGBT characters in general. That's another video, but I'm glad to hear that at least. Anyway, Naoto's entire premise for wanting to be a man sends a wider message to the audience. Transgender people are just pretenders who have interests that aren't typically associated with their birth gender. They like to do jobs that are usually meant for people of the other gender. That's the message the game gives off. Hell, Naoto literally even says, But though I will one day change from a child to an adult, I will never change from a woman to a man. Jesus Christ. The game is literally saying, You can't be transgender. It's just impossible. The game also frames sexual reassignment surgery as a super dangerous and risky operation, which is, uh, what? How? It's not dangerous at all. It's very safe and has been for decades. It's a science we've basically perfected. By portraying it to be this deadly, terrifying, and humiliating surgery, you're going to make it even more difficult for trans people to access it. Anyway, you can also date Naoto, because god forbid there be a woman your age in a Persona game that's just not into the main character romantically, but that's its own tangent. And guess what dating Naoto is all about? It's about forcing her to be more feminine. She wants to be more feminine directly because of you, the player. 
This is intensely coded as force detransition, it's fucking disgusting. I've heard there are mods that fix this particular aspect of Naoto as a character, but I don't think that most of this character can be fixed so easily, without significant rewrites to the story. Not only does this storyline fuck with any positive will I had for Atlas and the gender queer communities, it also fucks with any good will I had for Atlas and the Department of Homosexuality. Meet Kanji Tatsumi. His whole character is coming to terms with being gay. His only attraction to any male character in the story is Naoto, however. I think you can see where this is going. When Naoto essentially is forced to detransition, Kanji basically says, Oh thank god, I'm not gay. The way Kanji was handled already fucked with me, considering how every character likes to make fun of him for being gay, with no significant repercussions. But this? Oh my god. This is awful. There are many, many gripes I have with the circumstances and narrative of Naoto Shirogane in Persona 4. Each one of these things individually, the fact that her transness is just a phase to escape gender roles, or that sexual reassignment surgery is depicted as some lobotomy-esque procedure, or that you're basically playing through a forced detransition when you date her, or even that Kanji's gayness is treated as cured by her would be an attack on the trans community. But all at once? What the fuck? Why is this game as universally praised as it is? Ah, that's right. The bigger issue at hand. Gamers and their general illiteracy with art. This has been Arcade and Everlasting, amateur sociologist and professional author, signing off. Thank you for watching.